What's going on, guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to talk about a company you may not have heard of in a while, Nakamichi. Yeah, Nakamichi's been around since 1948. Started by Itsuru Nakamichi right here in the middle. There's some of the other Nakamichi uh, family members that were also involved. Nakamichi mainly was set up originally with tapes. They did reel-to-reel -reel tapes. They did... Um, tape systems for the home like cassette decks they got real high end in fact the nakamichi dragon which i'm going to show here is still one of the most sought after home tape decks ever made because of the measurements it's just extremely good quality but around 1983 they also started doing car audio in the late 80s early 90s they had a lot of uh, tape decks amplifiers things like that we'll show you an advertisement here for one of their cassette decks from 1988 they were very popular into the mid 90s or so they had the head units also that were they were really set up as audiophile head units and audiophile equipment they were what i like to call the gray poupon crowd you know what i mean pardon me would you have any gray poupon but of course so as recent as 2019 according to ceoutlook.com uh, diplomat trading based in Doral, Florida became the exclusive U.S. distributor for Nakamichi, including head units, speakers, amplifiers, and more. So we checked out their website and, ooh, check out this one. They have the N60T, N40T, and some other ones. They have different lines, including the audiophile series, and this one really caught my eye. This is the N60T. It has tubes in the preamp section. Just wow, look at those big caps too on the right side. But yeah, this one sells for $1,800. I tried to contact Nakamichi to see if they'd send me one. They're like, who are you? Here's the U.S. distributor. Go fish in a pond, kid, or something like that. But anyway, I did find one, the NGXA 80.6, and checked it out on eBay. It's $199. I'm like, wow, a six-channel amp, $190. And wow, it, you know, the specs look pretty good. 75 watts by 6 at 4 ohms, 110 by 6 at 2 ohms, 250 by 3 or 3,000 watts maximum. Yeah, right. As far as dimensions goes, 16.5 by 7.2 by 2.2 inches. The millimeter equivalents are on there as well for everybody outside the U.S. Let's open the box up, see what's inside. First off, here's the manual. And again, it does show these power ratings. They don't say RMS, though. They say N-Power. So I'm not sure what N-Power is. But again, 75 by 6, 110 by 6, or 250 by 3 bridged. And 3,000 watts maximum. You also get a remote base cable. This is a plastic encased base cable. It does come on the RJ11 style phone connection, which I like that because it doesn't pop out very easily. So that's the one we like. It latches in. In addition, you get some Allen keys, three 30 amp fuses, and some mounting screws as well. Here's the amp. The exterior looks kind of nice. The Nakamichi logo is in the center. It's cast aluminum, kind of a lightweight aluminum though. And we'll look at all the connections are on one side, which I really like this. And amplifiers used to do this back in the old school, but they kind of got away from it. Some of the new amps don't do this anymore. But yeah, you can see we've got the RCAs for all six channels here. And there's a switch where you can do two channel, four channel, or six channel, which is also very useful. That way you can use one set of RCAs and get everything all connected. There is a high pass crossover for channel one and two. Channel three and four has a band pass or a high pass crossover, which is very helpful. And then channel three has either a low pass or a all pass. In other words, pass through. It also has a remote base connection. All the speaker terminals there for around 12 gauge of speaker wire. Then we have three 30 amp ATC fuses, power protect LEDs, and then we have four gauge for power and ground. And luckily they put here how to bridge the amplifier because unfortunately the manual does not tell you this. So I'm gonna show you here how to bridge the channels just in case anybody gets one of these and wants to know. Channels one positive and two negative are for bridging those channels. Channels three positive and four negative are for bridging those two and then the other two channels five positive and six negative i'm going to show all of them here 
So if you're using a three channel mode, these are the three connections that you're gonna use. And this is how I'm gonna hook the amp up when I do the sound test at the end. Now what's the benefits of a six channel amp? Flexibility, yo! You can do a three way active setup with tweeters, mids, and woofers, all completely crossed over and all getting their own amplifier channel from an amp like this. You can do the five channel mode where you can do four channels for mids and highs plus a subwoofer, or the three channel mode, two channel mids and highs, and then a subwoofer as well. So very versatile style amplifier. Now, we are gonna show you the guts, and we've also got a new toy we're gonna show you, a thermal camera. So we're gonna show you the heat later in the video. So make sure you stick around for that after the dyno test. Now that we have the amp all wired up, let's turn it on. There you see the green power LED and also on the top, there's a red logo that'll light up. So now we're gonna fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, so it can do some RMS power output test for you guys so you can know what the truth is. Four ohms, the amp is rated 75 watts by six at four ohms. Let's try certified up to 1% THD. 58 watts. Yes, friends, a little shy of that in power rating of 75 watts by six. Let's try uncertified up to clipping. Maybe we can get that 75 watts. Nope, we sure can't. We actually got a little bit less. That's just because our voltage dropped a little more. Around 57 watts per channel. Again, this is time six. Dynamic power. Still can't get that 75 watts. 65 watts or so per channel at 14.34 volts so not quite there now let's check the efficiency again this is a class a b amplifier 47.6 percent we're not expecting very high efficiency numbers and we're not going to get them next up two ohms it's rated 110 by six at two ohms and again we're using the one kilohertz track i might not have mentioned that earlier but yeah we are 80 watts at two ohms so still not close to the rated power, unfortunately. Uncertified up to the clipping point. It's gonna be just like before, 80 watts per channel, times six. It's rated 110, They're a little bit reaching out. Even dynamically, we can't quite get to that 110, but we're pretty close, right around 100 watts. One of the channels got 104, but mainly about 100 watts per channel. Now efficiency, at two ohms, 46%, a little bit worse than four ohms, which we would assume that would happen. Again, class AB, expect that. Four ohms, let's try it bridge now. And here I'll show the wiring as well. Again, this is how you connect it up. If you're gonna do bridge mode for each of the channels, you can go back if you wanna see that. Let's see how close we get to that 250. 177 at 14.62 up to 1% THD. So again, well short of the rated power. Honestly, they should have rated it 220 by <laughs> bridge because it's 110 per channel at two ohms. So I'm not sure what the discrepancy is with that. There's no way that you could get more in the bridge power than at the two ohm load. Anyway, dynamically, we got at least 200 watts, 203, 206, 14.62. Efficiency in the bridge mode, 52%. Again, that's 525 watts total, all channels, where they're rated at 750 for all channels. So not quite there. Here's the test sheet showing all the results. Uh, the first column is a little bit off, and that's because I corrected. I had to rerun the test. But yeah, around 55 watts per channel at 4 ohms, 80 watts per channel at 2 ohms, and 177 bridge. Now let's find out what's inside this beast. Take off the six screws on the bottom, pull the bottom panel off, and here you go, single transformer. We have some filtering caps there on the left, and a bunch of class AB goodness here. I could not tell what these caps were rated, unfortunately. These are 50 volt, 2200 microfarad. These are for the rails, and yeah, it looks like Nakamichi 
NGXA80.6. This is a custom board for them, or either they just took somebody else's board and silk screened it. I'm not sure. Have a special treat for you guys today, though. I got the FLIR 1, or FLIR, however you say it. This is a thermal camera, and I'm going to show you guys what's cool about this. All right, here's my new thermal camera. Check it out. Look at how hot the amp is. Yes, the heat sink appears to be working because it is hot all the way around. You can see other parts of my lab which are not hot. Room temperature, there's a light up there which is kind of warm. But yeah, let's flip it over and see which individual components got hot. All right, here we flip the amp over. Wow, you can see there's definitely some heat these components here, right in the middle of the board, look at that, look how hot those caps are. Those aren't caps, those are resistors. But yeah, that's very interesting. I'm gonna try to use both cameras here so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Transformer doesn't seem to be that hot. But yeah, that's interesting. So being the big dummy I am, I forgot to turn on the overlay to show the temperature. So I did it after the fact, but unfortunately the amp had already cooled down a lot. But here you can see some of the components that got warmer. And those actually were the caps that uh, were really hot. So that's very interesting. Next time I do one of these, I'll make sure that I get it when the amp is freshly warm like here, 126 degrees Fahrenheit. So next up, we're going to try it out with some speakers. See if it bumps. What do you think? Let's find out. Fire it up, Big D. All right, let's try the Nakamichi 6 channel. Let's try Mazer Laser. Next up, we're going to try back rub. Dark Zephyr. to the question you always ask where the trap is Now let's talk about the pros and cons. First up, the good stuff, six channels, lots of flexibility, fully active, capable. All the connections are on one side. It does come with a base remote. Even though it's a plastic encased base remote, it's still a base remote. Four gauge power and ground and for the price. Getting a pretty good bargain here, my friends. Could be better, could be more power, could be more accurately rated. The angled power and ground I do not like. The efficiency is bad, but it is a class AB amp, so you should expect that. No Tiffany RCAs, just the standard RCAs. Again, this is a cheap amp. You cannot complain for the money. 200 bucks. So I really like this amp for what it is. Um, sounded good. 
I know you guys really can't probably tell that's not a very good sound quality because by the time YouTube crushes it and everything with the compression you can't really tell but it did sound good on the bench uh, a little bit weak on the subwoofer side it needs a little bit more power on the sub side but uh, anyway thanks as always you guys for watching supporting commenting liking till next time big D I'm out of here All right, just for fun, we did the six channel test, one ohm dynamic burst at one kilohertz, just to see what we get. And you can see the channels are kind of off significantly, 127, 151. I would not run a class AB amplifier at one ohm unless it's rated for that. Next time I promise I'll do the temperature overlay so we can see with the thermal what the temperature is for these different components. My bad. You big dummy.